I thank you, Lord, for your Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Glory to your name. How's everybody this morning? Glory to God. That's what I'm talking about right there. We're going to get to that. Amen. Do you believe that, lo that God loves you this morning? Yes, I do. do you believe that God wants to help you this morning? Yes. Amen. Do you really believe that, Dylan? Okay. He's, he, he's going to help you. Amen. He's going to help us today. Amen. Father, we thank you that you are our helper. Our, the Holy Ghost is our helper. He's going to lead us and guide us today. Amen. Glory to God. Let's go ahead and open your Bibles right up to Nebuchadnezzar. I mean Nebuchadnezzar. Good gravy. <laughs> to Daniel chapter 3, verse 14. Amen. I just feel like a, I feel like a racehorse in the stall right now. I'm just waiting for him to open the gate. Amen. So I can run. Amen. Glory to God. Daniel chapter 3, verse 14. I want you to pay real close attention today, amen? You got a word from heaven. You got a word from God this morning that's coming to you, amen? And I want you to stay awake and stay alert, amen, because this is important to you. Daniel chapter 3, verse 14. And that Nebuchadnezzar said to them, Is it true, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you... Do not serve my gods or worship the image of gold I have set up. Now when you hear the sound of the horn, flute, lyre, harp, and all kinds of music, if you are ready to fall down and worship the image I made, very good. But if you do not worship it, you will be thrown immediately into a blazing furnace. Then what God will be able to rescue you from my hand? Verse 16, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego replied to the king, We do not need to defend ourselves to you in this matter. Verse 17, If we are thrown into the blazing furnace, the God we serve is able to save us from it, and he will rescue us from your hand, O king. 18, But even if he does not, we want you to know, O king, that we will not serve your gods or worship the image of gold you have set up. The Living Bible Translation says, We will never, under any circumstance, serve your gods or worship the gold statue that you have erected. Amen? Father, in the name of Jesus, I just thank you, Lord. I want to teach this morning. Amen. They said, and we don't need to defend ourselves to you. What we're going to talk about today is the power of the word no. Just say no. Amen. Just say no. You don't have to make an excuse. You do not have to defend yourself. Does not the word of God say that Jesus is my defender? He will defend me. I don't have to defend myself. Amen? He will defend me. Your no requires no explanation. Amen? I want to talk to you about idolatry. Now we think, you're sitting here saying, well, I don't have a Buddha in my house that I'm feeding oranges to. I don't have a golden calf that I'm dancing around. Amen. Glory to God. That's good. I'm glad you don't, Mama. <laughs> but idolatry is not just worshiping an, uh, an idol. Amen. It's placing anything or anyone above the place that is for God in your life. First... Seek ye first the kingdom of God. Love the Lord your God with all your mind, soul, and strength. Amen? Then your neighbor as yourself. Amen? God needs to be first place in your life always and forever. Amen? 
It also, idol means false god. It also means false conception or notion. Wrong thoughts, wrong ideas, amen? Yeah. Wrong placement of things in your life. I prayed this week, you know, I don't want to sound all super spiritual and all of that. Pastor told me what to preach this week because obviously I needed to, this for myself as well. Amen? And you know I'm always going to share with you about me because that's just me. That's how I do. But the Lord kept giving me this word, kept giving me this word, kept giving me this word. And it's codependent. Amen? Amen. Codependent is a term used to describe dysfunctional. This means difficult. It means wrong. It doesn't mean it's not right. It's not smooth. It's not the way it should be. Amen. Dysfunctional helping. A dysfunctional helping relationship where one person supports or enables another person's addiction, poor mental health, immaturity, irresponsibility, underachievement. Manipulation of you so you will do what you, they want you to do so that they can make themselves feel better or higher or whatever the case may be. Amen. Amen? Amen? And God wants to break the power of codependency off of you. If you're watching by YouTube, God wants to break this power off of you because it is idolatry. Right. Dysfunctional helping of someone else that's making poor choices in life and it's hurting you, and you're not being a good witness to God or for God, amen, or it's keeping you from church, it's keeping you from serving, it's keeping you from tithing, it's keeping you from praying, it's keeping you frustrated and in turmoil and angry. What are you doing? You're allowing that to have the place of God's peace in your life. Amen? And God wants you to have peace. He, he tells you, seek it, pursue it. Amen? Amen? Glory to God. Proverbs 17, 18 says, so you say, well, I don't believe that. That's not scriptural. Well, here's your scripture to prove it. Amen? <laughs> Proverbs 17, 18 says, it is poor judgment to countersign another's note, to, come, to become responsible for his debts, or his obligations, or for his feelings, or for his joy, or for his happiness, or for his sense of belonging, and sense of respect, and sense of confidence. Amen? God is the only one that can give you that. God, you need to get it from God first before you get it from anybody else. You need to seek him first for all of that before you go anywhere else. Amen? To become, for, to countersign another's notes, to become responsible for his debts or obligations. And I'm going to say, even go further and say, be responsible for their behaviors. You're not going to fix anybody. You're not going to change anybody. Amen? Only Jesus, the Holy Spirit, the Word of God, can change someone. And there is a very important key to that. They have to want it. And then they first have to know that they have a problem. Amen. And I want, I want to go as far as I can today to say that people around you have been telling you that you have this problem and you're not listening. Amen. And I'm qualified to say that because I've been in that position where someone is telling me I have a problem and I'm saying no. And it's really not that someone. It's God speaking to me through that someone to say you have this problem and I'm saying no, I don't. And he's saying yes, you do. Amen. Rather than saying, is it I? Lord, is that me? Is there anything in me, Lord, that shows me to have poor judgment, that I countersign another's note, that I let someone else's behavior take my joy, take my peace, make me sick where I can't even do what I need to do, whether it be to go to work or take care of my own household or come to church? or get a job in the church, or pay my tithes in the church. Amen? It could be your past. It could be something in your past that's, that you won't let go of, that you're hanging on to. Amen? Amen. Titus, verse 2, chapter 11. For the grace of God 
that brings salvation has appeared to all men. Verse 12, it, grace, teaches us to say no to ungodliness and worldly passions and to live self-controlled, upright, and godly lives in this present age. And you say, well, what does that have to do with being codependent, dysfunctional, helping of other people? I'll tell you what it has to do, because you're giving something to someone that you shouldn't be giving it to, because it's causing harm to you, and you need to stop. The grace of God that brings salvation, the power of God that brings salvation is the power that brings us to do also what we live. It tells you right here. It teaches us to say no. That's what we're talking about today. Saying no to the things that are not conducive to your walk with God. Amen. Everything in your life right now, if you are in the sound of my voice, should be something that betters your walk with God that contributes to your walk with God. If it does not, then you need to get rid of it. Amen? Amen. Even if it, it may be a relationship. It, it could be your child. Your grown child. It, it, you, you may need to tell your child that lives at home, no. And just stand firm on that and say, no, that's, no, I'm the mama, I'm the daddy, no. Amen, it could be your grown children that you have to say no to, amen. Me and my house are going to serve the Lord. You may not drink alcohol at my house, amen. You may not watch filth on my TV, and you will watch your mouth in my presence, amen. Because I am your mother, <laughs> and I am a holy woman of God. And I don't need to hear that. I have to fight enough of it outside my house. I'm not going to put up with it inside my house. Amen? And, and, and if that keeps you from coming to my house, I love you. My love for you does not change. I will pray for you. Amen? But that's how it is. I want to give you some... Uh, I, as I was studying for this, I was like, Lord, God. I mean, I've heard this. I've been at this church for 12, 13 years. Amen? And I've heard that grace is the power of God working in me. We just read it. Amen? Enabling me to do His will. Amen? I've just heard it. And I heard it. But you know what? I'm a human being. And if God tells me, you need to preach on the power of no, then that means I need to say no. I was told you need to say no to a couple of things. I've been being told you need to say no. You need to stop doing this thing. You need to say no. And I just kept on and kept on and kept on and kept on until I'm almost a wreck. Amen? And God said, I said, stop. And I had to repent. For what? For my pride? Amen? I think sometimes we get a little bit too familiar with our pastors. We love our pastors. They love us. They're there for us 24-7. You can go hang out at their house, watch TV, and do all this stuff with them. But we need to understand and realize that these are powerful, Holy Ghost-filled people of God placed in your life over you to lead you and guide you in the things of God. Now, they will tell you, I'm not your mama, I'm not your daddy. But if Miss Jan tells you, you need to stop doing something, then you probably need to listen to Miss Jan and stop going, well, that's my BFF and my, you know, a hang. no, that's my pastor. And if she tells me I need to quit doing something, and I'm going to tell you something else, too. If she says, I just want to say something. If she says that phrase to you, I just want to say, can I just say one thing? If she says that to you, I'm telling you, you better listen. Amen? And take it in and go, God, help me. Okay, I'm just, I'm trying to help you here today. Do you, does anybody here need help in their life? Amen? I need some help in my life. Amen? Does she do it to you, too? I listen to You listen to Grace is, and, and we're talking about no here, okay? So don't think that I'm going to get off on no, and I want you to stay awake, and I want you to listen. I know I'm teaching. I'm not just up here on fire blasting. That's for next week, okay? Get ready. Moral strength. Grace is defined as moral strength, the influence or the Spirit of God operating in man to regenerate or strengthen. That came from the American College Dictionary, Okay? Because I have it right beside me when I study all the time. Amen? And I put it up there for a reason. Amen? 
So you can't, oh, that's just the Bible. Oh, that's just share. Oh, that's just pastor. No. Even the dictionary says that grace is just defined as moral strength. The influence of the Spirit of God on your life, you need it. But you are not going to have the influence of the Spirit of God on your life if you don't stop doing what He's telling you to stop it. If you don't start saying no, you're not going to have that influence. It will not be able to influence you. Amen? Amen? Did you see that in Daniel with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? And that brings me up to another thing. You need to start picking who you hang around with. These people were Daniel's friends. Amen? And did you see they all were of the same mind? They were all of one accord. Amen? And it was in their no. I am not going to serve anything but my God. I don't care what you do to me. I don't care what happens. I don't care what friend I lose. I don't care what lonely night I have to spend. Amen? I'm serving my God. I'm going to be the... I'm going to be what God wants me to be. I don't care if I have to turn the TV off and open up the Bible, amen, and read the Bible or read the book Shara gave to me two years ago and I still haven't read it. It's just collecting dust, amen. But I can be on Facebook all posting all these crazy things, you know, about going to hell and stuff. Open your Bible and read your Bible, amen. Get your Bible out. Get off the Facebook, amen. We're going to go to that in a minute too. The distinction, moral is the distinction between right and wrong according to God. Not, writing, not right or wrong according to you. Oh, it's okay because I interpret the Bible. It says I can have a little drink of alcohol because it says to be temperate. No, it says it's, it's of no use to you. It's a waste of your time. Amen? Beer is a brawler and wine is a mocker. And you need to cut it out. And if you've ever had a problem with drugs or alcohol, you really need to run as fast and as far away from it as you can. And he can ask me how I can say that because I know. And we're going to just keep moving. Amen? Because I'm not wearing that badge today. Glory to God. Moral, the distinction between right and wrong according to God. Moral being right, immoral being wrong or evil. There's no black and white, people. It's either or. Amen? Moral refers to principles or rules of right conduct. We are talking about no. Don't forget that. Righteous, just, virtuous, good. Where can you see all four of those words? Where have you read them over and over and over before? In the Bible. Those are God words. Amen? God words. Moral refer uh, strength. Okay, strength is moral power. We're talking about grace to say no, right? Say to live to live self-disciplined, right? To say no to ungodly, to worldly passions. Amen. Amen. That's what we're talking about. Grace, moral power. You have power. Inside of you, if you've been born again, you've got power inside of you to say no. If you have not been born again, Jesus died, was buried, and rose again on the third day that you might not go to hell, but go to heaven and have a good life here on earth. And all you have to do is ask Him sincerely to come into your heart, to be your Lord and Savior. Amen. Not none of this religious stuff. Well, I know the man upstairs. Oh, yeah, me and God got this understanding. No, you don't, because if you did, you wouldn't say that about him. That's right. Amen. That's right. It's time to get rid of all the religious garbage. Amen. And look to the author and finisher of our faith, Jesus Christ, the one who died and bled for you. Amen. I'm trying to stop playing games. Firmness. Remember, strength is moral power, it's moral firmness, it's moral courage, it's, it's the courage to do right, amen? It's good, just, virtuous, righteous, right? Firmness is to show or illustrate by example. This is the thing right here, by example, that you are fixed in place, securely fixed, in place, steady, settled, steadfast, unwavering, immovable. Always abounding in the work of the Lord. Amen? Amen? Glory to God. Why? So you can have everything that God wants for you. Amen? Yeah. 
He wants you to have so much. Amen. He wants you to have so much joy, so much peace, so much health. Amen. It's time. Miss Jan told me the other day, she goes, I just said, I got a bit. I said, I've had enough. I'm not doing this anymore. I feel good. And she, amen. amen. Glory to God. And she got better because she stood. Healing is our inheritance. I don't have to beg for it. I just have to say, Lord, I thank you. It's mine. You said I'm your child. It's mine. Amen. Amen. I want it. I got it. Amen. Steadfast, unwavering. We saw regenerate or strengthen up there. You know what regenerate means? It means to affect a complete moral reform in. Reform the improvement or amendment of what is wrong or corrupt. We need to allow God to correct what is wrong or corrupt or evil or immoral in us. And we don't need to sit here and say that we don't have it. Amen? Because we are all walking around in this flesh astronaut, astronaut, uh, astronaut suit. Amen? And we all have to deal with our flesh. But I don't know if y'all pay attention or not. You need to really pay attention to what your pastor's saying. He says, there's going to be a shift. Amen? And let me tell you, baby, the shift came. It's coming. It's here. But if you're not listening and you're not paying attention, you won't know. You're just going to keep on going as you've been going, and you're going to have a wreck. Right. Amen? Please don't have a wreck. The benefit of serving God is serving God. And it's not just coming into the church, you know, sleeping in the back of prayer. Thank you, Jesus. Putting on a show. It's letting God deal with your heart. It's listening to what the pastor is telling you over and over, over and over. And it's not pastor telling you. It's God telling you. He's using pastor to tell you because pastor's brave enough. He ain't scared of you. <laughs> so, he loves you with an everlasting love. And he loves you so much that he will let you go on and wreck your car and total it and whatever. But he is not going to, he's going to say no. Amen? He's going to do what, he's going to say no to anybody's manipulation of him to not preach what needs to be preached. Not say what needs to be said. Amen? In your life. He'll roll the dice. Amen? To save your life. Amen. To save your spirit. Courage is the quality of mind that enables one to encounter difficulties or danger with firmness. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. I mean, last time I looked, wasn't nobody trying to shed my blood when I was trying to resist. I haven't shed blood to resist sin Amen. like Jesus did. Amen. It ain't been that hard for me. You know what I'm saying? It's mostly up here, right? Because we've been told over and over again, if we have a desire, if we don't have the desire to serve God, God will give us the desire. All we have to do is ask Him. Amen? And He will change our desire. It takes courage to say no. It takes courage to tell your child that you love with all your heart that you bore out of your body. You can't come to my house. You're not welcome here. No, I can't help you. To not chase your child where they're going. Amen? To not lay down and quit and give up and get discouraged and wear it as a badge. Amen? I'm going to talk to you about that too today. And I've done it before. Wearing, walking around with this sad sack. You, but you don't know what happened to me. You don't know where I've been through. You don't know how my heart hurts. Get what do you say? Oh, shut up. <laughs> Jesus died for you. You got the Holy Ghost living on the inside of you if you've been born again. The same power that raised Christ from the dead living on the inside of you and you're whining because somebody that you, that you think they ought to do something the way you think they ought to do it goes and does it a different way. Amen? Or, or moves? Or lives out of state, or moves out of state, or whatever. You know what I'm saying? I don't, I'm probably not making sense. 
Get over yourself is what I'm trying to say. Stop being in the mully grubs. Stop being a victim. Stop being a whiny baby. Stop being sick. Stop posting your business on Facebook. Amen? You're opening the door to the devil. You've been told and told and told. It's time that you listen and stop doing it. Amen? <sighs> sorry. I'm not sorry. Thank you, Jesus. This is why. Compromise. A settlement of differences. We're going to the... A settlement of differences by mutual concessions. To concede means to what? I give, I give in. I'm standing on this rock over here, my firm foundation, amen. You say that I'm loved, and I'm going to sit over here and say, but they hurt me so bad. I'm just so hurt. I'm just so lonely. Oh, no. I'm loved. I'm loved beyond measure. I'm loved so much that the, the God, almighty God, creator of heaven and earth, would come and be as a man and die on a cross and take my punishment for all my nonsense on his own body so that I could live a good life and go to heaven and have peace and have joy no matter what you say about me because I'm loved beyond measure by the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And it don't matter what you say about me. Amen? Because my daddy is better than your daddy. <laughs> All right. Did y'all ever do that when you were in school? Don't talk about my mama. Amen. <laughs> Glory to God. Compromising is just, you, you just give just a little bit of what you know. You know it's you, you just a little bit. But what you don't know is when you give just that little bit, when you just take that sip of alcohol, when you just take that hit off that joint, amen, when you just post that post, letting everybody know where you're at and what you're going through, amen? You're opening the door to the devil himself and his demons. And he's seeking, he's walking around seeking whom he may devour, but you know what? He can't devour me, and I'm going to do everything I can in my power, amen? Not to let him devour me. And, and, and I want you to do that too, Amen? This morning, I was telling Pastor, I came and I, there's this whole situation. I'm not going to tell you the whole story, but anyway, long story short, I almost ran a stop sign at the HEB. It's like, here you are. You're all going to go preach, y'all. You've been praying in the Spirit, reading, doing all, and then look at you. You think you can just roll on by that stop sign because you think you're really something. I, was, I stopped. I didn't get past the stop sign. I stopped. I said, oh, God, oh, God, oh, God, oh, God, forgive me. You know, and you're laughing because it is funny. But that's what we do. That's what we do when we don't say no to the manipulation of other people in our lives. That's what we do when we don't say no to discouragement. That's what we do when we don't say no to disappointment. Amen? Amen. I had a situation in my life this past month. It's been a wow. It's a shift month. Amen? Glory to God. And I thank God for this church. And I thank God for my pastors who didn't let me slide. Who didn't let me make it because they love me with an everlasting love. Amen. And only have my best interests at heart. See, what your problem is, you think, well, how can, they, can't talk, how, they can't talk to me like that. How can you talk to me like that? Who you think you are? I, I, your pastor? The one that's supposed to be helping you live your life, live this. This is not just about sitting in church on Sunday and Wednesday. This is about when I go to work tomorrow, amen, when I leave here, amen, and go minister to cowboys, amen. And you think, well, how do you minister to cowboys? I take their pictures, and they love it. And see, you're not thinking right. You're not realizing that everything that you do should be unto the Lord God. And you should not have a bad attitude about it. You need to change your attitude. You need to start being grateful and know that serving God is the benefit of serving God. We need to let go of some stuff. Amen? And you've been, some of y'all, God's been telling you over and over and over again. And I'm going to tell you, I've said it before, I'm going to say it again. You are going to, if not worse, end up in the floor of your living room, slinging snot, and you won't be able to move until you repent. Amen. If you don't, like, just don't be hard-headed like me. You do it sooner, you know, so you don't have to get there. Amen. Amen. And don't hold on to the past. You know, there was one, 
I, I was very bitter. I was very envious. I was very uh, uh, covetous. You know, I, I wanted something somebody else had. I had a lot of pride. I wasn't being grateful. I, 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 God kept telling me, you have this problem. And I kept saying, no, I don't. And he kept saying, you have this problem. And I was like, no, I don't. You have this problem. No, I don't. And guess what? I had the problem. And I ended up in the floor, slinging snot, unable to move, unable to go, unable to say, you know, I was supposed to serve at church that night, and I was like, I can't, God, I can't do it. I can't go and do anything for you when I'm like this, when my heart is like this. When I opened my eyes and I said, is it me? And I saw myself for who I really was. Amen? And I saw that root and bitterness in my heart. Amen. And I said, oh God. And that's all he needed. That's all he needed was for me to see it. And then bam. All this, you know, you, 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 talk, you talk it out. You ask your forgiveness. And you have to, but let me tell you something. You've got to move on from that. Because once that happened, then I'm walking around on eggshells. And I'm thinking, oh God, and everything, I'm apologizing for everything. And I'm, and I'm like just breathing and thinking, oh, and I'm, so was I walking in God's best? No, I was walking in fear of being a bitter, jealous, unforgiving person, wanting something that someone else had when God's got something better for me than what they have. Amen. And you don't know the whole story of other people's lives as well. So you need to not want things they have because you really don't know the story. <laughs> Amen? Glory to God. So I said all this to say that if you've received some tough correction in your life lately, in the last month or so, just receive it and walk it out and move forward with God. And don't be afraid to step out again. And don't be afraid to do what God's calling you to do. Do it. If you get off track, trust me, He's going to let you know. Amen? But don't be afraid. Because when you're in fear, you open the door. And if you're afraid of something, guess what? It's going to happen. And then you'll like be, oh, you know, no. Just don't be afraid. Receive your correction and move forward. We'll go to Ephesians chapter five, uh, 3, verse 20. Now to him, who is that? Jesus. By inconsequence of the action of his power that is at work within us. Whose power is at work within you? Jesus', Jesus power is at work within you. Is able... To carry out his purpose. His purpose, not your purpose. Not your children's purpose. Not that person that's manipulating you's purpose to get you to do what they want. And it's really not even, it's affecting you and it's not even affecting them. It, it's not, they don't even, they're, they're happy, they're fine. You're the one that's all jacked up. Amen? The dysfunctional helping. <clears throat> To carry out his purpose and do super abundantly far over and above all that we dare ask or think infinitely beyond our highest prayers, desires, thoughts, hopes, or dreams. Amen? Now I want to take a little bit different direction with this scripture. You know, it's great. God does have things that you can't even ask, think, or imagine that He wants to do for you. He's got blessings for you. He's got all kinds of things going on for you. But you know what? That's right. You do. Good point. Miss Thelma is awesome. I love, she's a Holy Ghost, mighty woman of God. I love her. And that's right. Because God's not going to give you something, amen, that you're going to mess up. He's not going to let you have your husband if you're going to be an old fishwife to him. Amen? Like a water dripping on the... How's the proverb go? It's like a contentious woman is like the dripping of a... You can't be all yeah, yeah, and nah, nah, and nagging and doing all this stuff. Right. Anyway, okay. Never mind. We're moving on. It's to carry out His purpose. What if His purpose is for you to walk around like a superhero of Jesus? I'm a Holy Ghost filled. I got peace. My badge is healed. My badge is saved. My badge is joy. My badge is happy. Amen. I, I got joy. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. No, somebody told me one time when I said, I said, well, thank you, Jesus. And they don't realize I said, thank you, Jesus, because I didn't want to say something else. Right? 
Something bad happened. I said, well, thank you. Well, Jesus didn't have anything to do with that. Well, I know Jesus didn't have anything to do with that, but thank you, Jesus. I can say thank you, Jesus, instead of being negative. Amen? And take, because I'm going to tell you something. I don't know about y'all, but me, if I start on the negative trail, I'm falling in the valley. I'm falling in the pit. I'm falling in the hole. And then I'm going to be in the bathroom, banging my head on the wall, going, stupid, stupid. Why'd you do that? Why'd you say that? You know, because your words have power. You were created in the image of God. And he, he spoke, and things happened, so you need to watch your mouth. Yes. Amen? Yes. Glory to God. Created for his purpose. And I got a revelation. I was like, oh, God. Yes, created for your purpose. You can supernaturally, abundantly, above what I can think, ask, or imagine. All this chaos is going on around me. All this garbage. This, my kid this, my husband that. Amen. My finance is this. My finance is that. I got this, you know, they say I got this uh, diagnosis. But no, what, what if the part of the abundant above, the power working in us is to be full of joy, to be full of peace. Amen. To let that hurt go. I know it hurt you. I can't, some things, I can't even stand up here and tell you that I know how you feel because I don't know how you feel. But I know the one who does know how you feel. And if he is telling you to let it go and to move on, then guess what? You need to let it go and move on. Amen? Amen. Glory to God. His purpose. According to his purpose. That's, I think we forget that some. We oh, I just want the blessing. You know, I want the car. I want the house. I want the money. I want the husband. I want the wife. Amen. I want my wife to change. I want my husband to change. Amen. No. How about let's change? Because what is our first purpose anyway? We're called to be with Him. We're called to be conformed to the image of His Son. Amen. We were called to serve. Be a servant. A servant to the Lord in everything, whether in word or deed, do it unto the Lord. Amen? Be ye holy, for I am holy. Consecrate yourself. Amen? I know a friend, uh, one time's always preaching and all this stuff, and, you know, and they're going to the bar. All these, oh, well, all these, excuse me, all these ladies are going to the bar. They're all married. They're all going without their husbands. They're all going to be drinking. But I'm not going to drink. I'm just going to go. What? You don't belong in the bar. <laughs> That's not where... Unless God called you to go there and tell you to witness. Uh, oh, well, yeah. I'm going to be a witness. No, you're not being a witness to them. You're opening yourself up for all kinds of stuff. You're tainting your reputation. Amen. Glory to God. I jumped ahead of myself, so let's just go there. <laughs> then we'll come back. I'm, gonna, I'm sorry, I'm going to mess you up anyway, Carmel. <laughs> okay. So, abstain from evil. Shrink from it. Keep aloof from it in whatever form or whatever kind it may be. You need to abstain. You need to abstain from the appearance. In my Bible, from Bible study, I've written by this scripture, abstain from the appearance of evil. Don't even let people even try to say that you're doing evil. Don't go to the bar with the girls after work for drinks. Amen? You ain't got no business there. <coughs> Praise the Lord. Abstain means total denial. Amen? Total denial. Totally deny the appearance of evil. Well, I'm just, I'm going riding with this guy. You know, it's nothing. We're just going riding. Better not. Amen? The guy's drinking. The guy's smoking weed. And you riding with him. Really? Did you know that if you get pulled over, you go to jail too now? That's how that works now, just in case you didn't know. But anyway, that's not nobody in here. Uh, Luke 
We're going to go back. To be holy, conform the image of his son, to put him first in all you do, put no one or nothing above him. No, I'm not going to serve you. No, I'm not going to serve your gods, and I don't have to explain myself to you. And do you know that that's hard? Do you know it's hard? I walked into the gym. I had to repent a lot this week. I always have to repent a lot. But anyway, I go into the gym, right? I'm not going to the gym. I'm not using the gym. Uh, it, it's, my, my contract is up. I'm doing everything I can to not spend, you know, to, to say no to spending money that is not necessary to be spent. So I go into the gym, and I find myself trying to explain myself to the lady why I'm not going to go to the gym anymore. And I'm like, it, it was just a wreck. I'm like, I can't, you know what? I just don't want to come. I ain't going to come. She's like, well, keep the key. You're good through November the 19th. I've taken the thing. I was like, I repented. I was like, no, I'm not going to use it. Here's your key. I don't want to have to worry about coming back to give you the key. You know, and then I went home and I said, oh, Lord, did I say this? I got, you know, I, when I worked out at the gym one time, I had a little pain in my heel. And so I caught myself trying to say that I couldn't work out because I was hurt, injured. I was like, oh, no, 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 no. I, I can do better. Just I can walk for free. I don't have to go to the gym. Amen. Sp spend $40 a month to walk, right? I can walk for free. And I, I prayed and I said, oh, God, listen to me. We have thoughts that come to us, and we are so used to explaining ourselves and defending ourselves that we say stupid stuff when we just need to just say no. Amen. No. Can't do it. Sorry. You don't even have to say sorry, because you're not sorry. Right? No. No, I am not going to drink. I'm not going to go hang out with that person that I end up smoking weed with or drinking with or having sex with because I'm not married to them, so I need to just put myself out of that equation. You need to say no. Amen? Amen? Luke 10, 40 and 42. But Martha was upset about all the work she had to do. I like this other translation better. We're almost there. Y'all hang on. Y'all are doing good. Martha was upset about all the work she had to do. You got all this work. You're doing all this dysfunctional helping. Amen. And it's keeping you from the thing that's it's, it's causing you tension. It's causing you frustration. It's causing you anger. Amen. But it seems so noble and it seems so, you know, good. How can me not, you know... How is it that me, you know, paying my grown child's bills, how is that not good? Well, because they're grown, and they need to pay their own bills. And it's okay if they live with you, but they need to pay something for living with you. Amen? Praise the Lord. Uh, Martha was upset about all the work she had to do. She asked, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do the work all by myself? Poor me. Tell her to help me. Then you start telling Jesus what he needs to do. And he's trying to tell you what to do in your life, and you ain't listening. Because you're afraid you're going to hurt somebody's feelings. You're afraid, and they don't care. Amen? You need to follow God no matter what. And if that person can't deal with you, and I'm not telling, don't, well, I'm not telling you to get divorced. I'm not saying that. Don't take it that way. I'm saying... If that person, if you can't live for God with that person, then maybe you need to find another person. Or maybe you need to rear up on your hind legs a little bit when that person is getting you into sin and you have the right to say no. You don't have to participate and give in to sin even if it's your husband or your wife. Amen? Amen. Just saying. The Lord answered her, Martha, Martha. You worry and fuss about a lot of things. There's only one thing you need, and Mary has it. See, Mary was at the feet of Jesus. Mary was putting Jesus first. Amen. Mary was doing her Bible reading and her praying. Mary was at church when she needed to be at church. Amen. And he said that thing won't be taken away from her. Now what what Mary had what Martha had to do was that 
something that needed to be done? Yes, it was. But you know what? If she had that kind of house and that kind of money, I bet she had some servants. And I bet those people that were there in place to take care of all of that stuff were perfectly capable of taking care of it. And she could have let them take care of it. Amen? Does that make sense? But instead, she's worrying and she's got an attitude and she's mad at her sister and she's mad at Jesus. But Martha, you put yourself in that position. Jesus didn't put you in that position. Jesus told you to let go. You need to let go. Some of us are bogged down by our past. Past hurts. I said it, I'm going to say it again. Your past hurts. You, you know, I went through a divorce in, in this church while I was in this house. And, and, uh, and I cried and I whined and I wore it on my sleeve for everybody to see. Day after day. Week after week. Month after month. Year after year. And I was not walking in God's best for myself. I was not walking in God's best for anybody around me. Amen. And the kicker of it was I should have never got married to him in the first place. I didn't have no peace. Amen. The night before the wedding. But guess what? Instead of saying no, I was like, oh, okay, well, you know, this is what I want. I'll settle for this. Amen. I, I want it so bad that I'll just take whatever. And God's going, no, 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 don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. Don't do it. And I did it anyway. God's saying, I know that you're hurting. I know that you have pain. I know that you suffered a real loss. But it's time that you stop using that as an excuse to be late for church, to not fulfill the position that you have, to not really start learning and receiving what God's been trying to tell you for a long time. He knows you're hurting. He knows that there's a void in your heart. But guess what? He can feel it. That person couldn't feel it anyway. Pleasing those people can't feel it. Martha, Martha, doing all that stuff is not going to fill your heart. And you, and you need to stop. You need to stop chasing death. And you need to focus on your real family and your real purpose and start doing it with the, everything that you've got instead of doing it for show. Amen? It's time. It's time that you stop wearing a badge. I'm sick. I'm hurt. I'm going through something. And start wearing the badge of I'm loved. I'm helped. I'm strong. I'm not weak. Amen? I can do this. I don't have to defend myself to you. It's hard when you... It is hard to let go of some things sometimes, especially when it's a good thing. I know, I recently had to let go of something that would say no to something that seemed good to me, and I kept fighting against it for two or three months. I kept fighting against it, because I was like, this is, this is good, and, and, and I should do this, and, and, and I need to change, right? But God kept saying, stop doing it, and I kept going, no, I need to change. I need to stop letting it frustrate me. I need to walk in love and I need to do it because it's a good thing. And God said, stop doing it. I stopped doing it. I am. I got more peace. <laughs> I got more joy. I stepped out of the way. And when I stepped out of the way and stopped making it about me, the I'm not saying I didn't need to change in the situation. Don't misunderstand me. I always need to change. I know that. But when I stepped out of the way and I stopped doing it, then some things could be seen for what they were and not just share as frustrated, share as frustrated, share as frustrated. Does that make sense? Something you're sta sometimes you're doing stuff and you're standing in the way of God moving in someone else's life is what I'm trying to say. 
You are standing in the way. You're being God for them. You're being their rescuer. You're being their all in all. And you're not. And it, you're suffering for it. And they are not getting what they need from God because you're standing in between them and God. Does that make sense? Praise the Lord. <laughs> it's time to say no. It's time to say no to the things that God has been telling you to say no to. Say no to the old way of being and doing. Say no to the trusting in yourself of meeting your needs and start trusting God to meet your needs. Amen. It's time to let go of scheming. Amen? And manipulating. It's time to let go of the victim mentality. It's time to let go of just trying to look good. You know what I mean? If you will do the very best that you can do at what God has, has you in doing right then, then you can blossom into other things. Amen? But as long as you're pretending and trying to make a show, amen, it's not going to work. You've got to get real with God. You got to stop playing games. Amen. And if you have gone through the shift and you've been severely corrected, let that go too. And move forward and know that I can do this. I can do what God's calling me to do. Doesn't mean that I won't slip, stumble, or fall. Doesn't mean that I won't have an area where I give in and I go try to, you know, rescue my kids. Amen. And then I go. But you know what? There's no condemnation for those in Christ Jesus. And, and the Bible says, don't be condemned by that thing that you allow. If you did something and it wasn't like God's perfect will for you, but His permissive will for you, and you did it, just let it go. Put it under the blood. Amen? Amen? You did it. It's over. You just move forward. Amen? Don't beat yourself up for it. The devil wants to condemn you. He wants to make you feel bad. Your flesh wants to have a pity party. Amen? Poor me. And the devil loves that. And it's anti-Christ, anti-cross. If you've got a religious spirit, if you just want to run around and be seen, and God's not, there's no meat of repentance in your life, you're a Pharisee, and you need to stop. Amen? And let Jesus really work on your heart and in your life. And stop scheming and manipulating. Amen? And let Him really come and bless you. Amen? Glory to God. The power of no. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They hung out with people, Daniel, hung out with people of like mind, of unity, that were all, whole hog or none for God. They, let, they did not let the threats of the king. It would be like if President Trump came in here and said, okay, you bow down and you worship. No, I ain't gonna. Well, you're going to jail. Won't be the first time. <laughs> Maybe I'll get some sleep. Amen. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> That's not funny. It's funny if you've ever been to jail, but it's not funny. Anyway, praise the God. Praise God. Praise God. If you have... I, I'm, I'm going to leave you with this. Amen. We're going to leave you with this scripture right here. Then Jesus said unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself disregard, lose sight of, and lay aside some of his own interests. Yeah. And take up his cross and follow me. God's word said, those who want to come with me must, must, say no to the things they want and pick up their crosses and follow me. Amen. Amen. I hope you were blessed this morning. We're going to go ahead and just have every, everybody um, bow your head and close your eyes. The most important thing of all is that you, have, you become born again. No one is righteous. No, not one. Uh, baptism doesn't save you. Going to your mama's or your daddy's or your grandma's church doesn't save you. You can only be saved by being baptized in the blood of Jesus. And the way that you do that is to know that he, according to the scriptures, died on the cross, was buried, and rose again on the third day. He, the Bible says that without the, remission of, without the shedding of blood, there's no remission for sin. G, you cannot pay for your own sin. Jesus is the only one that can pay for your sin. And he did that on the cross at Calvary. 
And he was buried and he rose again on the third day. And if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and really mean it, amen, you will become a changed person. And God will work and move in your life. If anybody needs to be born again, you can lift your hand, you can come forward, you can stay right there. For the sake of those watching by YouTube, we're going to say the sinner's prayer. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, I realize that I need you. Thank you for paying for my sin. Come into my heart. Be my Lord and Savior. Change me. In Jesus' name. Amen. Now, if you need help with saying no, amen. Sometimes I see, I, I come for prayer a lot because I need help. And I want my pastor to help me and I want him to join with me. Amen. And um, I know a lot of times a lot of y'all need prayer and you don't come up for prayer. So, but I'm opening the altar. Missy's going to put some uh, music on. If you have a need of any kind, if you need healing in your body, if you need help to say no, whatever you need, Jesus is here. And he's the answer to your problem. So we're going to open up the altar and come on down. <laughs>